You're watching Prophetic Drive Time. I'm Eli Lasky. Let's get into this word. So I got a word for somebody this morning. Yes, Lord, thank you, Father. You see, the Lord is saying for someone that's not who you are. <laughs> that's not who you are. You see, the Lord says there's somebody out there, there's somebody out there battling their yesterdays. They're battling the facts of their yesterdays. They're battling the facts of their yesterdays. He said, but that's not who you are anymore. You see, the only truth comes from God. Mm, 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 mm. Holy Spirit, help me break it down for someone. You see, the Lord was showing me that there's a difference between facts and there's a difference between truth. You see, we, 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 we are under the impression that the only truth comes from God, that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Glory to God. He is the only truth. You see, now what happened is the enemy has been knocking on some of your doors, some of your doors with facts, with facts, with facts about how you used to be, what you used to do, you know, uh, uh, and trying to stir emotions, trying to stir up things in the flesh, which has caused you to be condemned, which has caused you to be, be, be filled with guilt, which has caused you to be uh, uh, full of shame. And you're wrestling with that and you're going to God, but God is saying this. He says, I don't recognize that prayer because I'm trying to figure out what you're talking about. <laughs> He said, because that's not who you are. Uh, he said, it, it's true that that's who you used to be. He said, but when you were born again, glory to God, when you were born again, he said, you became something new. And he said, it's time for you to wake up, step up and walk and shake the dust off your shoulders and start walking in the newness of life that he deposited in you. Why? He said, because we are moving into a time where the whole earth is groaning for the, for the revealing of the sun and daughters of God. He said, he said, we're moving into a time where the earth is waiting on you to take, to take your rightful position, your rightful place at the table. <laughs> to God, to take your rightful place at the table of your father. Glory to God. And he said, you can't do it. You can't do it contending with an old, with an old life. You see, that thing is dead. He said, that old man is dead. It no longer exists. And the enemy keeps trying to knock on your door. He keeps trying to knock on your door and solicit you with things of yesterday. You see, some of you have, are confused because the enemy tries to war in your emotions. He tries to war in your flesh because you can still remember the, the activity. But the Lord says it's a difference between what you've done and who you are. And he said the only conflict is, is that you are not moving into the truth. Glory to God. He said, because I have declared that you are a new thing. Glory to God. You see, your friends might not, your friends might not allow you to be something new. Your, your parents, uh, uh, your, your family, you see, they may not accept that you are something new but you the lord says you got to stop asking people's permission to be what i've made you to be you see, when they try to hold you into an old place, when they try to keep you connected to something old, then you got to say, I'm not asking for your permission. See, the Lord says you have to stop asking for permission to walk in what he has granted you access into. Glory to God. He said you have to stop asking permission from people to be who God made you to be. You got to say, I don't care what you talking about. I don't care what you believe or what you see or what you remember. Glory to God. Because God has made me something new and I have been called in this season and this time to stand up in the Lord says quit wallowing in the dirt quit wallowing in the dust. Mm, yes, you see because the, the, the Bible says uh, 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 from, from dust we were formed to dust we shall return. You see, and that's connecting us to the old, to the dead things. And, and, and that's what he talks about when shake off the dust, shake off those dead things and start to dust it off your shoulder and walk into the newness of life that's, that God has created for us in Christ. You see, he says this, the Lord says this, you have to walk into it. Mm -mm -mm. You see, our efforts and our journeys is about uh, laboring to entering to this rest, seeking first the kingdom, but you got to walk into it. You got to journey into that place. You got to take God at his word and move in that direction. Some of you have been looking for God to do this, to do this uh, uh, miraculous thing, but the, 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 the crazy part about it is he's already done it. You just got to pick up your bed and walk. You got to, you got to pick yourself up and say, okay, Lord, this is what you said. This is who you say I am. 
then I resolve to that fact that this is who I am. And you got to begin to walk in the new life that God has created for you because we're in a time where God is looking for sons and daughters and it's time for you to stand up. You see, the Lord gave me a, a, a kind of like a little snapshot of a scenario to explain this. Have you ever had somebody knock on your door uh, and, and looking for someone that, and you knew the person didn't live there? Knock on the door and say, hey, I'm looking for the uh, for the Johnsons. And you're like, uh, they don't live here. No one lives here. Oh, uh, well, this is, says that this is their address. And, you know, this is what they filled out on the form. It's like, yeah, but you got the wrong address. They don't live here anymore. Glory to God. And see, that's what happens. The Lord says, some of you, you got to start talking to the devil and telling him that person that you're referring to doesn't live here anymore. They don't live here anymore. You know, it's just the same way as if you get a phone call from a, a, a creditor looking for somebody who used to have the number that you currently have. What do you say? It's like, oh yeah, oh uh, yeah, we're looking for the Johnsons. It's like, uh, yeah, uh, you got the wrong number. Well, this this is the number that shows up on their, their application and on their form. You say, yeah, I, I don't know, it's my number now. You got the wrong number. These people don't live here anymore. And see, that's what happens when the enemy is knocking on your door looking for the old man that you used to be, looking for the old woman that you used to be. You see, he's coming with packages. He's coming with packages to reconnect you to that old life, to that old place, the old per the old person that you used to be. And he's looking to drop off a little bit of guilt. He's look looking to drop off a little bit of shame. He's looking to drop off a little bit of frustration, a little bit of bitterness, a little bit of unforgiveness. He's looking to connect you to that old thing. Glory to God. He's looking to find a way to try to connect you to something old so that he can bring you out of the space that God has purposed you to be in in this hour. But God says this, the word of the Lord for you today is that's not who you are. And it's time for you to stand up and walk in who God said you are. And let me tell you something, the first conflict you're going to have is your feelings. The first conflict that people generally have when God gets to calling them. You see, because Paul says, I'm pressing for the high calling, for the high calling, for the higher mark. You know, he said, I've, 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 I've set myself on a journey, on a course to arrive at the place that God has destined for me to be. And what happened is some of you have been log jammed. You have been you have been interrupted by the enemy at this place, at this borderline between your yesterday and your new day. And even though some of you have, mm -hmm, even though some of you have uh, 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 even made mistakes during the whole process, the Lord says there's a difference. He said when you make a mistake, even in the journey, you know, even even in the journey to walking in the new life. He said, you still gonna make mistakes, but don't allow the enemy to beat up on your head. What you do is you say, you know what, Lord? I was wrong, I made a mistake, I shouldn't have done that. That's not who I am. That's not who I am. That's a fact, but it's not the truth. Let me tell you something, the enemy always wants to define you by what you've done, but we are defined not by what we do, we are defined by what Christ has done. You see, the Bible says, as Christ is, so are we in this world, that he who knew no sin became sin so that we might be the righteousness of God in him. You see, it was his work that gave us the life that God says, you got to walk into it. You got to walk into it. You got to put down your emotions. You got to put down your own thoughts and say, you know what, Lord, I thank you for the new life that I have in Christ. You have to walk in this new life. And the Lord saying for you, your battle with the enemy has nothing to do with truth. You see, it's a, it's an old thing. He's, he's battling you with facts. And the Lord says that my truth is greater than the facts. Yes, it is true that you used to do those things. He said, he said, yes, it is a fact that you used to do those things. He said, but the truth is that's not who you are. Walk in the truth of God. Walk in with what God has spoken over your life. Walk in what God has declared over you. Walk in who God says you are. Glory to God. He said, because that is how you honor the work of Jesus Christ at the cross. And that's how the cross begins to have effect towards you. It begins to be effectual. You know, the, uh, 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 the Bible talks about in Galatians how 
The cross of Christ has no effect to some people, you know, and we know that Paul was talking about re the, the religious versus those under grace and, you know, all those things. But see, walking in your true identity allows the full supply and the full work of Christ to be manifest in your life. But you're battling guilt, guilt, shame, guilt, shame and, 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 and condemnation. That is that that creates a brokenness, a broken spirit. It creates a poverty spirit. And then you wonder why no money can flow through and you think well if I just be good enough now you start engaging your works because that's what the enemy wants to do now you start engaging your works and saying well Lord I'm doing this and I'm doing that and I'm doing this he said it's not it's not what you're doing it's about who you are you see the fruits come from who you are <laughs> the fruit is revealed through who you are and he showed me this example think of it this way you take an orange tree orange tree produces orange oranges it never strains it never yearns it never oh uh, be fruitful oh I gotta walk in I gotta walk in love I gotta I gotta produce an orange it never does anything like that you know why because it knows it's an orange tree it's the knowing it's in the knowing when you know that you are a child child of God when you know that you're something new when you know that you are that, that as Christ is you so are you in this world when you begin to know this truth glory to God then the fruit will flow freely <laughs> But the enemy wants to keep you connected to the old man. He says, that it, so this is the enemy strategy. He says, I want you to try to do new things from an old place, meaning you think in your mind, in the back of your mind that you're still this old person, but you're trying to be good. But God says this, it doesn't work like that because you won't produce fruit. You won't produce the fruit. But what happens is when you realize that you are something new, then then when you realize that you are something new and you as you grow to discover that newness, the fruit will begin to flow through the truth of who you are. It's just my nature. It's just the, in the nature that God deposited in me. It's just the result of who I am. And what happens is when you find yourself falling short of that, you're able to say, oh, you know what? That was my bad. You, you get sharp with somebody you're, you're a little testy one day you know you have a little you have a little moment you say you know what my apologies that's not, that you know what forgive me that's not who I am that's not who I am and you begin to even phrase your to dialogue differently with yourself and everybody else no that's not me I apologize for that I was out of character because that's not who I am Am. And the Lord is saying for you today, that's not who you are. You're battling with an enemy who's trying to who's trying to keep you connected to something that's dead and gone. Because when Christ, when Christ was nailed to that cross, he was being nailed to that cross as as you. Christ didn't die for himself. There was nothing in him that warranted the death that he that he suffered. But it was everything in me that warranted the death. So when he died, he really died in my place, which means this. The Bible says he took my place at the cross, which means that he killed me at the cross. At the cross, God killed me at the cross. Oh boy, that's, oh my goodness. I don't know if you're ready for that one. You see, at the cross, I died at the cross. <laughs> <laughs> you see, because Jesus was dying for me, he was killing my old man so that he can give me his new. Oh, okay. He was he was killing my old man at the cross. <laughs> so that he can give me the life that he has. Glory to God. As Christ is, so am I in this world. So we have to we have to resign ourselves to the truth. The Lord says that's not who you are. You're fighting an enemy who keeps soliciting you on some old, keeps trying to sell you some old things. And remember this: you don't need nobody's permission. To walk in to what God has done. What see the work has already been done at the cross. The work has already been done by Jesus. So the guilt and the shame and all these things that no longer belongs to you. You see that no longer belongs to you because you're something new. You as Christ is, so are you in this world that we're in. This world and the Lord is saying for you to step up, get up and walk into it. Get up and walk into it. Let me tell you something. When Paul and Silas was in the prison. They begin to pray and they begin to rejoice. And the Lord said he shook the whole foundation and the prison doors open. Now, the only reason that they didn't walk out is because they had a purpose to fulfill. But God is saying for you, he's already shaking those prison doors and you don't need nobody's permission to get up and walk out. And it's time for you to get up and walk out and walk into who God made you to be. Stop allowing the enemy to come in and torment you, to play with your mind, to make you feel guilty, to make you feel ashamed. It's time for the sons and daughters of Christ, of God, to be revealed. You get up 
and you walk into the newness of life that, that you did not earn. Some of you are struggling because you did not earn it. You, you're right, you didn't earn it. It was a gift because God so loved, he gave the sacrifice, the atoning sacrifice, the atoning gift, which is Jesus Christ. So get yourself up, walk into the newness of life and stop allowing the enemy to break you down and to torment your mind about your yesterday, about the facts of your yesterday, because the truth of your today, glory to God, because the truth of your today is God has made you a brand new thing. Behold, all things are new. And that's my word for you today. God bless you all. Love you all. Talk to you soon.